we're going to talk about state machine input namings. Um, so naming um, in Rive is, is important in some cases, um, specifically for things like the artboard, which is specified at runtime. Uh, for example, if your Rive file has multiple artboards, and at runtime you want to run a specific one, um, at, at runtime you have to specify the name of the artboard that you want to run. So having these kind of naming conventions, um, or any any kind of naming conventions at all, um, is is good practice to have um, when when creating your Rives. Um, another important naming thing is the state machine name. So this is also specified um, at at runtime if if uh, the state machine wants to run automatically and things like that. And then the last part is the inputs. So um, as most of you are probably aware, there are three kinds of inputs in the state machine. There's these toggle inputs, um, which kind of just, or it's, it's kind of like a Boolean where it's, it toggles on and then off um, immediately. Um, we also have the Boolean input, which is where it, you can see it's a checkbox here. You can turn it on or off as needed. And then a number input, which is kind of like a floating number um, input here that you can set. And so with naming conventions, um, I, I like to have names where it, it's, uh, or w when we work on projects together with the team, uh, we, we kind of come up with a naming convention of using things like camel case so that it's always predictable. Like whenever I look for inputs in a state machine, um, I, I can always reference that it's camel case. So you can see here, like complete task is started and stuff. Um, another tip is with Boolean inputs, um, in code, it's a common convention that um, some Boolean variables are prefaced with the word is, is something happening, or so in this case, like is started. Um, and by the way, this is this is a community asset I found. Um, I was hoping to use this for like a to-do app or something in, in my spare time, but um, yeah, I, I did not make this. Uh, so I, I have that is started, is, completed kind of uh, naming convention. You can kind of see where, where that kind of uh, convention is getting at. Uh, with trigger inputs, these can uh, kind of be you know whatever we want. Um, I like it to be some kind of action because uh, it's going to be fired at runtime, um, kind of like calling a method. So in this case, I call it complete task, um, a complete task trigger. So uh, at runtime, I would say complete task dot fire um, as a method. And then as far as number inputs go, I like to think of these. Uh, th these can be kind of um, ad hoc. So in this case, I'm thinking of using this input name progress state as an enum. And so um, each value here would mean a specific state in the state machine, which I have not built out yet. But um, it, it represents, like the 0 represents the state of like is not completed. Um, one would be like in a task is in progress, or in two would be like a task is completed. Um, and so these are just some kind of, uh, when, when you're creating these input names, it's good to just think of like, what's a good naming convention? If you're working with other people, um, you know, just ha uh, either work on a document or go over the RIVE file together um, to, to understand kind of, you know, what kind of makes sense. Uh, to both design and develop side. So uh, that's what I wanted to show there. Uh, you can use your own naming convention if you have another thing that you like to go off of. Um, that definitely is not prescriptive, but just some light suggestions. Um, and then the other one thing that uh, I think we get a lot of questions about in our help requests is, um, you know, if, say I'm a developer and I'm looking at a, a, a arrive file and I don't really want to go into the editor um, to look at you know what are the artboard names and the input names and stuff like that um, I'm going to in uh, we get this a lot with like the web run times so here's an example we had in one of our uh, live streams a while ago where we used one of JC's assets to choose an avatar um, with any of the web run times once you have the rive object so in this case I'm using the react runtime um, once you have the Rive object here, you can call the contents property. And uh, here's my console log. I have this in a code sandbox. Um, you can actually dig into uh, and kind of debug like some of the names that are important for um, instantiating things. So for example, skin demo, uh, 
I think this is the name of the artboard. Um, you can look at the names of the animations if you're looking to uh, do specific animation playback control. And then you can also look at the state machines. Um, so you can get the name of the state machine, in this case, motion. You can look at the different inputs here. So there's a skin input. Um, so here's just like a, 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 a fun, convenient uh, debugging method to quickly get access to some of these um, important things in a RIF file if needed. And that's all I had.